and people like that stood up for me. Zena's boyfriend, he'd recently smashed a gang member and his face was wired back together and he was taking his food in from a straw. All these people stood up for me. They said, don't walk the yard alone for the next few days, we're going to make this go away. And I didn't, and I was terrified, I couldn't sleep. And the gang members were coming to my door and throwing batteries and stuff. Um, but it did eventually go away, because if you're a murderer, you have seniority on the yard. There's a, there's a pecking order in prison. If you've murdered gangsters, and you're at the top. If you've murdered a woman or a kid, heaven help you, because the gangster murderers will murder you when you come in. So people like Two Tonys had seniority. So having alliances with the right people helped me. Being English helped me. I was just thankful for all things English that had gone international at that point because I had a cellmate who, would, who, who knew all of these lines from a Clockwork Orange and that was his thing, you know, he'd watched it so many times. Prisoners were asking me if I knew the Spice Girls and if I knew the Queen <laughs> and all this stuff. And coincidentally, my sister did go to dancing school with Sporty Spice <laughs> so I could talk about these things. Um, so I was just thankful for all these things English. I've got a sales personality type because I was stockbroken and on the phones and talking to people all day. So that helped me cultivate uh, people skills. You know, I'm not a big tough character, I'm just a skinny nerdy guy. These gang members would smash me in a heartbeat. So I had to just think on my feet and use the gift of the gab, you know, to just find out who the right people were and, and get in with them and just keep going. It's like a video game. You've got all this danger around you all the time. And you're wondering, you know, how can you get through it? You just push through it. Mm. And you just constantly, you know, all this ever present dangers all around you. I was at, I was on the phone to my girlfriend. And a race riot started. And the head of the blacks, this guy called, he's, he's one of the characters in the book, this fight's in the book as well. He started, he was bullying um, people of all races out of their commissary. So the other three races sent torpedoes to smash him in his cell. This guy had never ever lost a fight. This is why they sent multiple torpedoes. So I'm on the phone to my girlfriend. These torpedoes go up the stairs. Start beating this guy. And he was, first thing, the white torpedo grabbed him by the neck. And the guy, the head of the blacks, he knocked his head back and broke the guy's nose. Twisted it and blood just shoots out. All this is going on. And all the blacks hear this and they all run up the stairs. The whole pod starts fighting. I mean, people are picking up mops and brooms and doing ninja moves in the day room. The guard who's on duty that day um, is a very tough guard. He's supposed to wait for backup in a riot situation. He just puts on a spacesuit and grabs a fire extinguisher sized canister of chemical spray and comes running down the, the, t um, the tower stairs. And I see this. And I'm trying to get up the stairs. He's already cut the phone lines off. He comes in right behind me, and everyone's fighting on the stairs, and he starts spraying the guys with the mop, doing the ninja moves first. Once that spray hits you, snot runs out your nose, tears run out your eyes, and it stings, and everyone started scattering. Um, I run back to my cell, I've got a cell that was an old time, he says, look, what you've got to do is, because of the spray, wrap a wet towel around your head, and just blink, 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 and it washes the chemical out. So that's what I did. But... Um, it's like anything can happen any time, you just get caught up in it. It doesn't matter how how smart you are on your feet. Knockout, but everyone locked down, and there's just knockout with the white torpedo left in the cell. And they're still fighting. And the guards just start spraying the spray in the hole of the cell. And they're blind. They're like, they're fighting blind. And they're like, we're blind, we're blind. You can hear them fighting. And when they stop fighting, and all these other guards come in, they let them out. And the white torpedo comes out first, and his nose is over here. And he says, in a polite cowboy twang to the guards, he says, do you mind if I put my nose back in place before you handcuff me? <laughs>